You're listening to the Ball Talk Podcast with me, Ryan Bailey. This podcast is brought to you by Adapt Athletic Performance and Therapy. Head over to Instagram and give them a follow at adapt underscore clinic. If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends and hit that subscribe or follow button as well. Without further ado, let's get straight into the podcast. This is episode number 48 of the Ball Talk podcast and today I am joined by Tom Collins and Tom, the floor is yours for the next 30 seconds to a minute, whatever you want to say to introduce yourself. Hello, uh, yeah, I'm Tom Collins, I'm from North Wales and I'm a singer-songwriter, um, I'm 23 and yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here to be fair, thank you very much for asking us Ryan. No bother at all. I have um, I have a bit of a habit of saying I'll get people on the podcast and not actually asking them on. But I came across you on TikTok probably 10 days ago now and I just said, Do you know what, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully Tom gets back to me and you did, thank God. And, and we're here now to record this podcast. So as I said, it was TikTok that I came across you on. Um, and as you said as well, you're a singer-songwriter. So the first question I have for you, and it's a question that I ask, well, I try to ask everybody on the podcast. I've been doing it since around Christmas time. I have forgot on a few occasions. My first question for you is, and I am putting you on a spot a bit, you've got a dream concert, okay? So you can have three acts, one after the other. They can be dead or alive. It can be any venue you like. You know, it's basically your, I'm handing you a ticket to have any three, one after the other in the one day. And I'll give you a few examples. So my one would be Fleetwood Mac, Oasis, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. We've had people... (sighs) come up with Phil Collins, uh, Christy Moore and the Wolf Tones, the Spice Girls. There's been a lot of different, a uh, lot yeah. of variety in it so far. So this will be, be a good feeler for us as well in terms of who inspired, maybe who inspires you in music as well. Yeah, that, do you know what? It's a tough question, that. But I, I've got two that I definitely have. I think Oasis, I've got to have Oasis because I was kind of born too late when they were big, really. I, I was born 97, and I think Nebworth was 96, so I'd love for them to be there and just to see them. Like, I've seen Nolan and Liam separately, both great, but it's not it's not the real thing, is it? Yeah. And then the, the other act I'd pick would be Queen. Um, Freddie Mercury, for me, is probably one of the best vocalists I've ever heard. Um, and I know a lot of people like to put a downer on them because they're, they're quite poppy and they're mainstream, but... They're brilliant. They've got some great songs, and watching them at um, Live Aid um, is, you know, I, w- I wish I could have been alive really to see it all. So yeah, they'd be the definite two, and then the last one is hard to pick really. Uh, maybe Fleetwood Mac. I do like Fleetwood Mac. I think they'd be good, or or maybe the Beatles. Got who knows? Yeah, but there's so many you can pick. Yeah, it's the kind of question that like I've had lads that have asked this question too and they could turn around and text me the following day and say do you know what I should have put this one in because I was only thinking about it last night and you will it's, it's a bit of a brain wrecker but that's your that's your three or four for now anyways so keeping on the topic of music and starting out with music so you, as you said you're 23 years of age so were yeah. you playing music from a young age? Uh, no to be honest this is a weird story to be honest because I as a kid I was never that interested in music because my mum and dad didn't really give me the influence like a lot of people have their parents like pass down records and CDs and stuff and my mum kind of just listened to like it was like Boys Own in Westlife Take That Robbie Williams because that's all that was in the CD cabinet and like, I remember getting it do you remember the Pop Party CDs? Yeah <laughs> Yeah well, I, we used to get them for Christmas and the two bands that I used to like want to be in was Busted and McFly. So you could probably say some of my influences come from there, um, but they were like my guilty pleasures. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I used to love the music and they were kind of that, them bands that wanted to be rock bands, but they were more like pop groups. Do you know what I mean? They were more like boy yeah. bands. Um, but yeah, I didn't really start listening to music properly until I was about 11 or 12. That's when I started listening to Oasis and Coldplay um, and then it's kind of just grown and I've kind of just had to find it myself. But 
I picked up the guitar when I was 17, so what's that, six years ago now? And I've just self-taught fr from them, really, and that's that's kind of where it started. And getting into... So just to start off, I suppose, as you said, a, like a hobby sort of a thing, but when did you yeah. think, do you know what, maybe I want to start doing a few gigs, maybe I want to actually perform in front of, in front of an audience? Yeah, well, it started, like... As I was, I was about 16, 17, and I, I used to watch my mate's band and they used to do a lot of pub gigs, only covers and stuff like that. Um, but I remember watching them and thinking, I want to get up and do that, do you know what I mean? And, and it's funny yeah. because I've never, in school, like at GCSE and, uh, we, well, we, that's what we call it over here, and A-levels and stuff, I never did music as a subject. I, I was never like, it, it's weird. And you, you'd never say that now. So I... I ended up doing it as a degree eventually, um, but I think watching my, my mate's band wanted to make me get up and perform. So about a year later, when I turned 18, um, I decided to start doing them. I bought myself like a little amp, <laughs> mic, stand. I mean, I had a second hand guitar and then I just started from there really, um, just doing rough little gigs here and there. And oh, I started doing a few open mics before then, but that in terms of like proper gigs, I was about eighteen, and then I've just done it ever since, really. Hmm. And so you started off as on your own, and I was doing a bit of digging and a bit of you know you have to do a bit of research for this sort of stuff, but at the same time you want to learn, uh, like I want to learn about you. There's no point in me yeah. looking up everything I can about you and, yeah, and yeah. knowing knowing the answer to the questions. But you were in a two man band. Is it Continuum? Is that the name? That's the name, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I met a guy at um, Edge Hill University uh, where I did my music degree, and his name was Sam, and we kind of just clicked straight away. But we, I was, we were actually in a five-piece um, on our course, so we did a music production course, and we kind of just got together, and we had a chance to go to Parsheet Studios in Liverpool, which is where, like, Colby, Rihanna you know, loads of massive artists have recorded. So it's a no brainer. Do you know what I mean? You want to go and do it. So yeah. we got together and we wrote a couple of songs and it just started to kind of like, I was like, Oh my God, I'm actually starting a band here. I, you know, I've never been in a band, so I didn't know what to expect. You know, and I, I was very inexperienced in terms of my songwriting and, you know, I'm not, I'm not really like for me, I don't look at myself as a musician because I'm not a great guitarist. I'm more of, I like to write the words and, sing that's basically it really you know i can play a tune and that's it I, I can't do anything fancy so that was kind of relying on the other members and then sam came in sam was off another course sam actually plays piano that's his primary instrument um but it, in the end it it kind of folded and the other guys weren't as committed so me and him just went on, on our own as continuum and then we just kind of did acoustic gigs um kind of around around ormskirk and like the northwest area and then back here at home in, in North Wales. So that, that went on for about two years, but then we kind of, I think it was last Christmas, we we, we parted ways because we, we just had a few disagreements and we, 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 didn't, we just didn't really want to carry on, I suppose. Yeah. But I'm sure it's been a good learning curve for you in terms of going out on your own and doing doing gigs on your own as well. 100%. I mean, the, the thing I can take from, and Sam's such a talented guy as well, it... it being with him made me perform better because, well, he used to play a cajon as well as he used to do lead guitar and cajon. So that it gave me more of a rhythm to my, it sounds silly, but a rhythm to like my playing and stuff like that. So it's like, and now I take that on board when I've gone back solo on my own and I feel like I'm more up for it in a way. Mm. Um, but I've definitely learned a lot and especially going to university doing it, I've gained a, a bigger passion and that's kind of where my EP came from as well. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it all comes with experience and practice and it, you know, you don't have to have guitar lessons and singing lessons. I've done it all myself. You know, you just kind of have to believe, believe in yourself. You have to love it and you have to be confident enough to, to go out and do it. And in terms of the, the open mic nights and, and the first few gigs, was there ever a stage or maybe maybe it just happened over time but was there ever a point where it just clicked and you're like yes yeah, I, I can go and do this now and I can go and I can release an EP and I can actually do well for myself off this um I've never really I suppose had that moment I think it's just kind of just came over time like I've just took one step at a time and hope you know I've always thought oh, I'd love to release my own music and then yeah, that's just kind of happened um with uni because my EP was actually a dissertation 
So I had to do it, do you know what I mean? And then I right, thought, man. oh, it, sound, it, it actually sounds all right. I'm quite happy with the songs. And then I thought I might as well just release it. And that was my first release. But no, I don't think there's ever been like, it, with open mics, that was all just gaining confidence and getting up to perform because I, I've looked at like old videos, you know, when you see like old videos of yourself and especially like singing and, and you just think, oh God. And, yeah. and you, but then, but then you think, you know, I, I have improved and a lot of people say to me, bloody hell, you've, you know, you've come on so well since then. And it, it's good to see that in a way, in, you know, in a progress perspective, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Not like not blowing my own trumpet either, but I find that as well with podcasting too. Like I'll watch back. Look, this is what number, this will be 48, as I said, yeah. Now, there's probably 55, 56 different videos gone up on the on the on the channel on YouTube. If I could, I'd go back to the first five and delete the lot of them. Like, you know, you look yeah. back and you're like, the editing was shoddy. I remember my first podcast and I the two the two of us were on screen. It was I, I had um the fellow that was with me, Enda Smith, who'd be it would be a bit of a household name in terms of Gaelic football over here. His screen was uh he just his phone just up like this instead of on a side. So you had me. As I as we are now, and, and another screen with two blank spaces in between, and looking oh back, and now I wish I could only <laughs> I could only change it. Like, but as it is, if if you go back and look at that sort of stuff, you realise how far you've come, and it just makes you want to push on and keep going further. So, as you said, the, with the AP, that was a, um, the AP was part of your it was part of your college course, was it? You had to do it. Yeah, so it was in our third year of university, so we had to do like a project, like a dissertation kind of thing, and we had to write like so many words and make a project. So it, obviously it's got to be like a niche subject, which was difficult at first, because I was like, oh, what do I do about? So I, I looked at my strengths and thought, well, my best, my strength is, is writing, you know what I mean? So I, I looked at like narrative, and then I spoke to my tutor, and he said, why don't you do like... Um, like stories, like different, like love stories, because, you know, some of my songs do kind of come from that. And I, I looked at the likes of like Romeo and Juliet and stuff and uh, Bonnie and Clyde and stuff like that. And like the, the different, the, the different, um, like the tone, if you like. Mm. Um, but looking at them, it was a little bit too sparse. So I went on to do Greek mythology. So, I picked out four different myths and picked a theme from each myth. And then the theme would go on to make a song. So I'd turn the story into a modern narrative and each song in the EP is about that myth. So not, right not a lot of people know that because people kind of listen to the songs and think, oh yeah, he's just singing about, you know, his experiences, which is a mixture of my own experiences in there, obviously to kind of give it a bit more of authenticity. But that, they're, they're actually based on Greek myths and not a lot of people know that. And that's why it's called Telling Tales because the tales are actually the Greek tales. Um, but yeah, it, it was a fun experience because it's something I've never done before. It's the most challenging songwriting experience I've done because I had to do it in eight months. So I had to write four songs that made sense that I was happy with in, in that short amount of time. And it was a, it's a good thing to do, I think. I think if you are struggling to write, it's always a good task to set yourself, kind of put it on, down on a piece of paper and say, listen, I'm going to write songs about this. And, you know, you never know where you go. And it brings out your comfort zone as well. So, yeah, it was a really good experience. Yeah. And I th what I like there, what you said as well, it's not you're not only writing about the Greek, Greek mythology sorry, side of things. If yeah. you can relate to it as well, I'm sure that makes it a lot easier for you to be able to go and, and write the whole thing. 100%, yeah. Well, that's the thing, I think if you modernize the narrative and, you know, get it relatable and people can listen to it, think, oh my God, I've been in that situation. Do you know what I mean? So that's always key, I think, in, in the, in modern songwriting. Were they the first, so the, the first four in the, in the EP, Rivers, Shoulder, Toxic and Arrow. I don't know them off, off my head. I have them written down here in a sheet of paper. I'm not, I'm not that <laughs> skilled. I'm not that skilled of an interview yet, but uh, from the Tell and Tales EP, were they the first four songs that you ever wrote so, or had you been doing bits and pieces before that? No, they weren't. Um, there's, I've, I've wrote a few more before that, but it's kind of like, like the, the first song I wrote was eight. It's called 18 and I wrote, after my 18th birthday I was hung over and I was kind of just a bit like I had like the blues you know what I mean I thought that's it now I'm 18 I'm done and I wrote this song but I've kind of ne never done nothing with it I I've played it at gigs 
but I haven't. Um, I've recorded it a couple of times, but I wasn't happy with it. And it's kind of like left in the in the past kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Because it's mm. it's such a more immature. It's more immature if you get what I mean. Like, yeah. If you if you compare it to the EP now, it'd be like I'd be going backwards because I feel like my songwriting's matured since then. Um, and I've yeah, I've done another couple of songs that I wrote at uni, but hopefully trying to release them. Um, Soft Lad was another one which mm. I wrote before the EP. Um, but I just okay. didn't have a chance to get it out, really. Um, but, yeah, I, I've got a few that I just haven't really put out there yet. I'm just waiting for the right time and hopefully get them out. <laughs> With the help of God now, yeah. So just the whole this, the whole thing of songwriting, I've had a few lads here on the podcast with me as well over the Christmas. Um, there's one lad, uh, Martin Martin Kerr, Martin Ocean is his, is his stage name. He's he's a, a, well, a neighbour of mine. He's about five, five or six K over the road. And he writes his own raps and songs. There's another guy, Shami Avoyle, who's a, who's a DJ and, and makes up his own sort, his own music as well. And it just fascinates me the whole the process of songwriting. Like, do you see? Do, do you feel that if you were to write about a song, it would have to be one of your own experiences, or can you just turn around and just write whatever comes into your head? No, not at all. I mean, it, most of mine do come from my own experiences, but. I think it's good as well. The, the thing is, with that, I think if you're writing about your own experience, it means more to you. So when you're singing it live, it you know what I mean? It's going to touch you a bit more. But so if you're writing about something else, it, it depends really, because like you look at like stereophonics, a lot of their early stuff is is about like people they knew in their hometown and stuff like that. But mm. I, I suppose that has got a personal reference to it. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's, that'd be cool, actually, to write about something else, like just to write about someone and pretend that it's me in first person. That'd be yeah. cool. I get what you mean, yeah. So the lockdown, so we're nearly a year. Well, I'm not sure about over in, in, in Wales and England and and the UK, but over here anyways, what was it, March? Late March? Is March, it? yeah. Into lockdown. I think the whole world went into lockdown around March time anyways. Um, yeah. It's given, for me personally, it's given me the opportunity to go and make this podcast I'm doing so I do journalism in in college myself and podcasting is something that kind of comes with that and podcasts are they they became a bit of a trend over lockdown for people to start doing podcasts so I started that up myself and I found lockdown to be good for that and without lockdown I wouldn't be able to do it has lockdown helped you in terms of your music yeah well funnily enough I was actually doing journalism as a master's right uh, during the pandemic so I was lucky enough to do a lot of the practical stuff um, before we went into lockdown. And then obviously we had to do a lot of digital stuff. But I was doing a little bit of podcasting too. But yeah, I don't know. It's been a rocky one because I just done, my last gig was the 7th of March. So you can imagine how long ago that was. And then I think we went into lockdown like the 20th or something. It was something along that. But I had loads of gigs booked. So like my April, April was pretty much like every weekend day I was doing a gig no matter yeah. what and so for them to just be cancelled and everything it was it was it, you know a, a lot of people in the same boat aren't they but it, it, it proper killed me because I think that's in music that's the most thing I look forward to doing is playing live and performing um, as much as I love songwriting as much as I love doing a bit of producing and you know all the social media stuff but getting up and doing a gig is that's the reason I love it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And to not be able to do that is soul crushing, <laughs> but yeah. um, it's just one of them. And I think I, I did start writing a lot more. I think I probably wrote the most songs last year than ever because I was literally sat on my own at home doing nothing. And all, you know, all these things come into your head and then you just kind of just let it flow out. So I, I did try and produce some of my own stuff, but then I kind of just left them again because I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm yeah. not happy with him. I'm quite, I'm quite picky with my own stuff. So, but yeah, a lot of it, I, I, I can probably see more positives than negatives, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, well, like uh, you're saying there, you're a bit picky with your own stuff. And I think that's a good way to be. You're kind of, to, to, yeah. to coin a phrase, you're kind of like striving for, for perfection. You want what you release to be the best that it can be as well. Um, but over the lockdown as well, I'm, not sure when you when you started doing shorter videos on TikTok, but you hit two thousand followers on TikTok. Was it yesterday? Yesterday, the other day, yeah, I can't probably day yesterday. Before, maybe. Yeah, maybe the day before. Yeah, well, that 
that kind of sprung from, I think it was summer. Uh, it was like the end of July or something. And I, I'd had TikTok before because everyone was on it during lockdown. It was quite big, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, I just had like a personal account. And um, my a guy I know um, at the record label um, who produces my music, he said, why don't you get on it? You know, why don't you do it? And I thought, oh, I don't know. Because, you know, you watch it and you see a lot of people doing like miming and dancing and stuff. Mm. And, it, you know, you... you you got to realise it. It's not all about that. you got to just be creative in your own way. And it, it's a great platform to have. So I thought, you know what, I'll try it, see what happens. And then I started finding my feet with all these covers because I knew that a lot of people liked Oasis and, you know, loads of indie bands. So I thought, I'll just do that. Yeah. And then I, I started doing like different categories and that. And then it started picking up a bit. And then ever since then, I've kind of just stuck to it because it, it's a good platform to have because a lot of people... Um, fit in that demographic so a lot of uh, younger people who listen to the, like, the same music as I do they just want to hear me sing covers um so yeah. yeah it's 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 good it's it's good because I've struggled on the likes of Instagram and like obviously Facebook I think is a little bit more of an older demographic but uh, you know Instagram and stuff like that I, I don't really bother with Twitter anymore because people do me heading on it but <laughs> Instagram I, I've struggled to kind of get that recognition and I think TikTok's helped me because a lot of people from TikTok are now following me on Instagram. Yeah. So it's, it is good to have. And, and it's kind of motivated me a bit more to put more content out every day, which I don't normally do because it's hard to find content, especially when you're not gigging or nothing. Or you're not, if you're not releasing any music, it is hard to kind of just put that. So you just got to, you got to be more personal with it, I think. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. Cause I, cause that's what I'm, I'm trying to do the opposite now of, of what you're doing. You're trying to get the people from TikTok to come over and follow you on Instagram. And it's just something about having a high following on Instagram that that makes it look makes things look more respectable and makes it look like you know you're Definitely. doing something right and what you're doing. Like I know I hit 900 followers on Instagram uh, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, and trying to get that to carry over to TikTok, I put up probably 13 or 14 different TikTok videos. There may be a, a little preview of a podcast or um, something like that but I've got some like 300 followers and TikToks and that's out of very little effort. You know, if, if I actually put something into it, maybe there can be that bit of correlation between both. Now subscribers on YouTube, that's, that's just, it's, it's very hard to get, to get uh, subscribers on that. It's like so difficult. Like I was looking at like the analytics and stuff like that on, on the YouTube studio app. And it's something like nine, 93% of people that watch my podcast aren't subscribed and it's just not something you do. You don't think to click subscribe anyways. But like, you know, I would have 300, no. what, 320 is the equivalent to 7%. You know, you're talking probably over 3,000 subscribers there. But uh, but yeah, it's it's a difficult one to try and get everyone to kind of move from one to the other. But the TikTok for you, and I know I'm rambling on here a bit, but uh, the TikTok for you and, and something I've noticed you're doing is the categories. It's um, uh, an underrated song from every artist through the alphabet. Is that right? That's it, yeah. So I, I start the first one I did was um, my favorite. It was a favorite song from each year I've been alive because I thought it'd be quite fun to do because it's it's like a challenge in a way because you've got to find a song from that year. You know, there might not be a song, but um, so I did that from '97 to now. Well, 2020 it was at the time, um, and then I did one hit wonders, which is quite good to do because that's like never ending. There's like so many, and then I did the underrated songs, which is the hardest one really because I was getting to like the letter Q and well, not Q because you got Queen, but like <laughs> letters that you wouldn't even you couldn't even think of bands like I and stuff like that, and I wouldn't I'd, I'd have to like dig into something or like. Do you know what I mean? But it was good to do because people were following it and saying, oh, you know, keep it up and stuff like that. But I think most of the views and everything comes from the requests when people comment and just say like, oh, can you do this one? So yeah, sound. And then I'll get ultimate guitar on my monitor and I'll just play something for them. And then they, they, they appreciate that as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just finding, finding your feet really and finding what you're good at and, connecting with your audience the best way mm. it's and it is hard starting off because i think like on instagram I, i've only got 300 followers and i've been on, on i think i've been on it for like two years now so it's it's difficult it is difficult trying to grab your audience but it's one of them yeah like i i know one one thing that's really helped me to gain followers on it is 
So through the guys over at GRG, uh, which is a, a local sportswear company and sports brand, they designed a few tops for me with the with the logo on and stuff like that. So we run competitions every few months where we'll do maybe an order for for a few jumpers or jackets or something like that. And we'll do a few competitions where you have to follow the page to be in with a chance to, yeah. to get it. So I probably have three, three quarters or two thirds of my following from that alone. And it's just, you know, as you keep going, you learn bits like that to, yeah. to, to try and get it going. Um, Giveaways are a great thing to do as well. Cause I, yeah. I, um, I tried to do one the other month and it was a 500 follower just to try and get the followers up. And it was basically a, I'll pick three people out of whoever's liked, shared and commented um, and I'll send them like a CD of some of my demos and then a song of their choice, you know, like a cover. Mm. Um, but obviously that hasn't really took off yet, but hopefully, you know, it seems to, my followers seem to have gone up again because of TikTok. So hopefully things might change with that. But it's, it, yeah, it's, like you say, it's just finding little things that, you know, and hacking the system, if you like, um, and getting people on board with what you're doing. Mm, exactly, yeah. So we'll look at, and I'm going to be bouncing around with something I do, and I, I probably said this in every podcast so far that I'm bouncing around from topic to topic. But we'll go back to having a look at gigging, or maybe it could be gigging. This could be on, on Instagram, on Instagram Lives, or on TikTok, or something like that. What has been your proudest moment of your music career so far? Um, I should know this because I, I've, had, I've had this question asked a few times. Or a fond memory, maybe, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Par Street's probably up there because I never thought I'd go to a studio where Chris Martin's played on the piano and recorded, like, half of his hits. Um, so that was massive to do that, go in there. And the thing, I, we got to do it twice, so we, we had two songs... Um, which I think I might have done acoustic demos on my SoundCloud. Um, they're called In Time and Galaxies. And we did them two um, in the space of like six months in, well, we had the whole day to go and record. So we had to do it in one day. So God knows how we did it. But the, the guy, Chris Taylor, the producer, he's awesome. He just knows exactly what he's doing. But I remember on both days, ironically, I was nervous. And because I was the last person to record, because obviously I was the vocals, um, I just shut out. My voice was just... I had to take Lemsip and everything because my voice was just gone. And right. I, I, I... So I was so nervous in the vocal booth because everyone's watching you through that, you know, through the screen and stuff and, and trying yeah. to, like, motivate you and that. Because it's hard because it's quite a personal thing singing. And I, I'm probably rambling now, but it, it is quite a personal thing. And you've got to think everyone... If it's going out on the radio or it gets heard, everyone's going to hear that. Do you know what I mean? And I think being in such an atmosphere, like a place where, every, you know, Blossoms have recorded, The Coral have recorded, Rihanna, uh, like, like you say, Coldplay and stuff like that, Stereophonics, you know, you're in this place and you think, oh my God, I'm actually, I mean, you're a bit starstruck. So I'd probably say that's probably my proudest moment or maybe getting played on the radio, maybe, yeah. prob- maybe that as well, which was, um, that was BBC Merseyside, that was. Okay. Uh, but what one of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see now. Yeah, so the, with the radio as well, it, like radio is a funny one too because I did, like I did three-month work placement on the radio and I know like YouTube, Instagram, all social media has taken off and it's like maybe it has come at the expense a bit of radio. There's just something about, something about getting your voice out there on the radio, it's special like, because I know a lot of people will actually go into their cars now and they'll connect their speaker or their phone up to a speaker or something like that, listen to their own music, but quite a lot still do listen to the radio. There is something special about it. Yeah, definitely. I think because a lot of people, majority of people now, especially like the younger, younger generations are using, they're streaming, aren't they, on Spotify and Apple Music. Mm. And, you know, I think there's a few of us that, well, I, I personally think it's always better hearing it on the radio or, or maybe a vinyl record or a CD because it, there's there's something a bit more like authentic about it. You know, getting streams isn't the same as like CD sales in my opinion, but it's one of them. And you don't yeah. make a lot of money from it. But yeah, I remember doing like a few interviews on the radio. 
I think it was, it was a radio station in like Stoke or something like that. I think it was called Laser Radio. And that was okay. cool just to have like a chat and then play a couple of my songs. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I think as well, you, you know, everyone's always listening to the radio. You know, there's a lot, of, you know, everyone's driving everywhere, aren't they? And yeah. everyone's always switching on the radio, whether it'll be like the high, you know, the A-list ones like BBC Radio 1 or, you know, something a bit smaller. But yeah, it, like you say, it, it is nice to kind of hear your voice on there and, and see if you can reach a wider audience again. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so looking at from here on in, Tom, and, and what the future holds for you, what's the, would you be a man that had set goals for himself in, in, in terms of, you know, maybe releasing music or you want to hit a certain amount of listens by X date or whatever? You know, I don't, I never set goals for myself because I don't want to like be disappointed. And especially with how times are at the moment, I think it's, it's hard because especially I've nearly, you know, I haven't gigged for nearly a year and I've tried to do live streams quite a lot, but um, I think letting things flow and seeing how things go is is the best option for me anyway. Uh, But yeah, I should have some new music coming in like the next month or so. I wouldn't want to give you a date because I don't know when it's going to be out, but we're halfway there with that. That's a, a double-sided single that's on its way. So hopefully you'll get to listen to that very soon. But yeah, in terms of any goals, I just want to keep growing the audience. And I, at the end of the day, I, I couldn't I couldn't care less if I was famous or not. I want people to hear me music and relate to it. That's mm. that. I think standing up in a in a stadium and singing your songs and people singing back to you—that must be the best feeling in the world. Mm. Absolutely, be, isn't it? Yeah, and please, God, no. Well, I hope to God from this podcast that you get a few more listeners from Ireland, anyways, and a few more followers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tom, thanks a million for coming on to the podcast. It's been it's been great having you on. Thank you very much, Ryan. Cheers for having us, mate. No bother at all, and it won't be the last time you'll be on either. So, um, brilliant, yeah. Get us back on when I've got some new releases, yeah, exactly. We'll be sharing that, that'll be shared on the page for sure. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your day as well. Spot on, cheers, mate.